Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to clean and spray in the vineyard. I'm going to clean with this, actually exfoliate the vines. I'll show you that when we get down there. But basically, the vines have a real loose scale on them, the, the old bark, and a lot of things attached to that before winter. And once the shoots start coming out, a rain will wash that stuff onto your leaves and reinfect your vines. There's always infection in the vineyard, whether you see it or not. So. You want to keep things as clean as possible. I'm also going to be spraying the dormant oil spray. Not a lot of vineyards do that, but I do. It's just an added layer of protection. Yeah, I had a little bit of a mishap here. I was looking everywhere for my dormant oil. I was sure that I had some. I looked in the shed, in the greenhouse, in the 4x4 shed back there. I looked in the breezeway. I looked upstairs. I was looking everywhere. Couldn't find it. And then I went back into the shed and took one last look. And bada bing, bada boom. I forgot that I bought a gallon of it last year and it was sitting on a shelf like that with three other gallons, one on each side, and all of the gallons looked exactly the same. So, you know, the other ones were dye and other stuff like that. So luckily I have this. It takes a fair amount to this. You need three and three quarters of an ounce per gallon. I can't remember how much I sprayed last year, but I'm gonna mix up four gallons I have the entire vineyard, I have some vines up here, and then all of the apple trees need to be sprayed, or the two apple trees and the cherry tree. So I'm gonna mix up a batch, I'm gonna spray the trees right away, and then we'll head down into the vineyard and I'm gonna do a quick exfoliation of the vines, then do the spray, and then a little bit later I can take my time with that. I got to go up and down the aisles and completely clean the vineyard out. Okay, I need 15 ounces. There we go. All right, I have this half full with warm water. Pour this in. And now I'm gonna shake it up and then I'm gonna go add the other half of the water. All right, I'm adding warm water the hot is the only thing on but it had cold water in the hose this stuff mixes a lot better in warm water just kind of watch in the back there coming up on four gallons okay that is about it all right what i'm doing right now is just getting rid of the extra flaky bark along the tops of the cordons and especially right in here where the trunks turn into cordons. I really need two hands for this. And then I just grab some of the bigger flakes with my hand. And I generally move really fast doing this, but it's kind of hard when you're holding a camera. But you could see how flaky this bark is and what I'm trying to do is just remove as much of that as I can in a quick pass. A lot of it comes off just with your hand. Then when I spray this with dormant oil, the oil has a better chance of getting right to the inner bark and killing anything that overwintered on the vine, which is what the, the dormant oil does. So it's basically just a little bit of house cleaning before I spray. 
to give the spray a better chance of getting to the pathogens that are on the vine. And like I said, I move really fast when I'm doing this. Um, I don't know anybody else that actually does this. It's just an added thing I like to do. Same thing with the dormant oil. I don't know of any other vineyards that use dormant oil. In the back row here, and I've been spraying the dormant oil now for, oh, maybe an hour. And I'm nearly done, just working my way through the back row. I have to walk backwards because it's kind of windy. And what I'm doing is spraying at real low pressure, low pressure, low volume, and you could see it's just drenching these vines. The majority of the disease that your grapes will get either wash down from the cordons onto the shoots or they splash up from the ground onto leaves. So if you can get the top part, I go the entire cordon and about halfway down to the catch wire, which is the fruiting zone. Once these bud out, they'll have really long shoots real quick. So I want to get this stem you know, down below the point where they're going to be when I spray the first actual spray, which is Mancozeb and a few other things. I got to pump this one second. So I already sprayed the other side. And I have a few more things to spray when I'm done with this. I have a couple other vines up top that I need to spray yet. But I should have plenty of oil. And if you don't want to use dormant oil, which is uh, paraffinitic oil, you can use neem oil, which is organic. I believe it's a lot more expensive, but to each their own. And a little word on exfoliating. This rough bark here, whenever I'm pruning or, you know, just even looking at the vines, I peel this stuff off. It'll fall off sooner or later. But this is just a place for spores to collect and for bugs to lay eggs. And you really want to get rid of that stuff as soon as possible. And I go around and specifically exfoliate which is yanking the stuff off like this on the real bad ones like this one and I use a brass brush and brush them a bit see now you can see the nice smooth bark nothing's gonna live on that especially once I spray oil on it but you can see there's plenty of places for spores and bug eggs and bugs themselves to hide in this flaky bark here. So you want to keep the vines as clean as possible within your time considerations. I mean, it would take forever if you went around and fully clean these, but that is what I used to do when I only had two or three vines. It's fairly easy to do then. You can peel off all this stuff every year. Yeah, you can see, look at how flaky that is. And then you have nice smooth bark underneath. You're not hurting the vine. That stuff would just fall off anyways. It's last year's bark. Yeah, this one is exceptionally flaky. All right, I got to pump this thing in order to spray again, but you can see what I'm talking about, about exfoliating. All of this bark is from last year, and the reason it's splitting is because the vine is getting bigger. So it splits the old bark, the vine gets a little bigger, and next year it'll do the same. And it just makes for a wonderful place for 
bad stuff to live. All right, I'm gonna get a bit more spraying done and then we gotta go around and clean up the aisles. Now that all of the vines are pruned and they're all sprayed with dormant spray, now I'm going to go around and do the big cleanup. All of this stuff, the old ties that are laying on the ground, the prunings that fell on the ground, all of that stuff needs to be picked up because, like I said, the majority of the disease that you get in your vineyard is splashed up when it rains or drip down. The cleaner your vineyard is, the less chance you'll have of getting disease. These are probably the biggest no-no to leave in your vineyard. They're called mummies, and what they are really is raisins from last year. Because of the amount of sugar they have, they make like a perfect incubator for any disease that was in the vineyard last year to overwinter. And if you have them laying on the ground like that one right there, and that gets splashed with rain, and that gets on leaves, and then that spreads to other leaves, you could have a big mess. It's best to get these out and get them burned early in the year. It's pretty windy here. Hopefully that's not messing up the audio. I like to remove the loose bark at the base of the tree while I'm getting the mulch out of the way. We cut the grass into the rows every year and it just sits there and becomes mulch. And as it rots, it gives nitrogen to the, to the vines. But you do not want any kind of mulch up against the trunk of your grapevines or trees or anything. And if you can, while you're taking this stuff off, take it out of the vineyard. If you can't, you can't. But if it's convenient, take it with you. So nice clear area around where the trunk goes into the ground so it doesn't get rot or disease there. And then we'll move on to the next one. This goes actually fairly quick if you're not recording it. I'm going to get in here either later today or sometime tomorrow in between the rains and spray glyphosate on all of this green stuff. And at this time of the year, you can spray, you can actually just spray the trunk if you wanted to, but I spray right around it. The glyphosate will do no harm whatsoever to a grapevine unless you're spraying it right on something that's green. If you were to spray it on leaves or, or uh, 
emerging buds, you would cause damage, but spraying it on a trunk is not going to do anything. And a very messy area right here. So I'll get all this stuff sprayed. Not exactly sure what it is. Kind of looks like wild carrot. Doesn't smell like it though. Doesn't have any smell. Wild carrot smells just like carrot. Okay. A lot cleaner down this way. Oh, not really. This is the remains of uh, tillage radish. Um, I'm just going to push that away from the trunk. But otherwise, that's just going to rot out. Same thing down there. All right, let's get moving along. All right, one row completely done. Now I'm going to walk back up this aisle and pick up anything in the aisle, dump it in the wheelbarrow up there, and then go down the next row. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up. Yeah, the vineyard looks beautiful, nice and clean and pruned like this. That is a lot of junk that was in the rows. A little bit in the aisles as well. I did not do this one, but I'll be working on this one a little bit later. I'm gonna get this row planted, get the end rows in, the line posts, all that stuff this year run the wire and I will be training the plants that are there now and new plants. I'll be training everything up to the wire. So that's something to look forward to. So now what's next in here is I have to spray the weeds and overseed the aisles. You have to overseed every year, same as with your lawn, because when you're mowing it, it never goes to seed. So you basically have the same grass growing there forever and gets a little bit tired after a while. It's a good thing to add some new blood once in a while. And we have spots of fertilizer damage. The fertilizer we have, you have to set it and then jump on the mower and it just comes pouring out. It's fine when you're moving, but when you're first starting out or when you're stopping, it just dumps a pile. It's, it's a real piece of crap. I'm gonna try to fix that with like a throttle cable so that you can pull out and open the, open the little hatch while you're on the mower, while you're moving. That should solve that problem, but I got a lot of other stuff to do first. It is getting really windy here, so I'm gonna have to sign off. If you wanna see this row go in, that's pretty interesting. I have to uh, saw these posts and get this H in there that has a nice long screw holding it in. 
a little bit of drilling, a little bit of digging, and then I'll be setting up a spinning jenny on the other side of the vineyard to string the wire. Should be real interesting. So if you want to see that stuff, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.